is Michelle Giuliano with Salt Consulting coming to you live here from the Geneva area city of peace. And I'm proudly introducing you to Karen Say of Bridges to Justice. And she's very excited to tell us a little bit about the Bridges to Justice Hub. Karen, can you tell us a little about yes. it? Yes, so the Bridges to Justice Hub is actually something that we've been looking at in terms of being able to consolidate our movement of the past 18 years. It's a space, um, it's, a, it's a virtual home for the over 40 countries where we're working so that lawyers can come together, judges, prosecutors, everybody who is wanting to work on this mutual goal of ending torture as an investigative tool by giving people a lawyer early on can come together on this hub. So that's not just related to the legal community, but it can be technologists, communication experts, lawyers, anybody and everywhere. If you want to contribute, if you want to volunteer, if you're interested in this mission, it's a place where we can come together. So the Bridges to Justice Hub, is it sounds like it's really going to accelerate the way in which you do yes. uh, this important work. Yes. Can you tell me what is the major factor that prevents access to justice or the protect, you know, wh why do we need the protection of a lawyer and why don't people just automatically have that? Well, unfortunately, in many countries throughout the world, people are accused of crimes. And although the laws are on the books that say you have a right to a lawyer, right not to be tortured, if unfortunately you don't have the resources when people pick you up and, and um, the police are in front of you, they may start breaking your fingers immediately because it's the cheapest form of investigation. Oh, torture. However, by having a lawyer, it brings you protection. It's something that many people are conscious of, and yet it's not something that we have in the past built a world movement around to protect, to protect people from this abuse. And it's, it's something which can be easily done with the protection of a lawyer. And this involves a number of things, including um, training for the lawyers, uh, roundtable discussions with the judges and prosecutors, and bringing the resources in so we can build this step by step in country by country. So as these stakeholders join the Bridges to Justice hub, yes. they'll be able to access, I imagine, best practices? They'll be able to access best practices. They'll also be able to access each other. So we often have lawyers in Burundi who are looking to connect with lawyers in Cambodia, or it could be in Switzerland or where not. And while there are many resources, there's often just a lacking sense of structure, structured pool, so that we can really move this forward. So as you're building mm -hmm. this hub, who's, who's involved? Who are the stakeholders today who are helping you conceptualize it so that it really is going to be best in class? Best in class. Well, just in terms of the communities in all the countries we work in, it's obviously the lawyers who are our first. We're looking at institutionalizing defenders worldwide, the judges and the prosecutors, but also we've had a number of um, organizations and firms involved in technology who are interested in partnering together with us. The first of which is Fiscal Note, and we've been in discussion with them about how we can have a launch of a partnership together and super excited because they're interested not only in the general platform of a technology hub for us, technology justice hub, but they're also looking at supporting us in individual countries like Cambodia. Fantastic. Karen Say, thank you very, very much. I'm very excited about Bridges to Justice and its hub. Thank you. Me too.